Lava Foodie Iced Tea Four clean drinking iced tea flavors Lemon Lovers Passion Fruit Lovers Raspberry Lovers And Blood Orange Lovers Iced Tea Eat clean, be well and stay well With our clean eating spice blends at Lava Foodie Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. It is September 12th, and today is our Love of Foodie LinkedIn show. We're back on Mondays, and I know last week was a Labor Day. I hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. And my special guest today is Stephanie Havel from Wells Fargo. She is a brand manager. She's also a brand ambassador of Affirmations, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. Welcome, Stephanie. Welcome. Thanks, Michelle. It's great to be here with you and all your guests. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. So we met, I always like to tell people how I know you or if I know the person. And we met a couple of years ago at a seminar in Minneapolis and uh, found out that we both, um, that you at Wells Fargo as my sister-in-law and just kind of connected then and then reconnected recently. And I said, I'd love to have you on my show and tell us what's happening in the uh, real estate world, the finance world, the bank world. And let's get into Stephanie. Um, so tell us a little about, bit about Stephanie. Yeah, awesome. Well, again, yeah, my name is Stephanie Havel. I reside in Blaine, Minnesota. I am a native to Minnesota. I've lived here all my life and uh, uh, really love it. I'm I'm here by myself. I love. I don't have kids or pets or anything like that. Um, but I love Minnesota, and I'm really active um, on a water ski team in the summer when I'm not working. Um, I'm part of Bald Eagle Water Ski Shows, which is a lot of fun. But as Michelle said, my primary job is a branch manager with Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. Uh, so I've been working in mortgage and financing for over 20 years, and I love it. I truly just love helping people with home ownership and uh, just that experience of owning your home is so exciting and so great. And I just love it. And I love being able to uh, lead and coach and mentor people um, to help them be successful. And that's kind of how the uh, affirmations thing came about as well that we'll talk a little bit later about. But that's pretty much me. I just a uh, homegrown Minnesota girl um, and currently residing in Blaine, Minnesota. Great, great. So Stephanie, let's talk about first about some of your awards that you've won with um, Wells Fargo. I know 2020, 11, you won an award and in 2021. Yes. Well, I kind of take it back. In, um, so there is an organization, the Minnesota Mortgage Association. It's a uh, entity that really focuses on helping mortgage, you know, in the mortgage industry. They do some legislative work. Um, it's just really a great community. And so in 2011, they started a program. It's a a long running organization. I don't know really how long it's been around, but for a long time. And in 2011, they started a program called the Loan Officer of the Year. And it's just somebody that um, not only takes pride in uh, doing great work in the mortgage industry, but also in the community and volunteering and so forth. And so I was uh, elected as the Loan Officer of the Year. It was the first year that they offered the award. So I was pretty excited to be the first one of that recipient back in 2011. And uh, because I do, I do a lot of volunteer work uh, with Junior Achievement, which is a nonprofit that focuses on financial literacy and education. So I teach I volunteer in the different schools, anywhere from kindergarten to high school, um, okay. talking about financial literacy uh, and also just doing homebuyer workshops across the Twin Cities and different organizations and communities. So that was kind of my first award. And then both in 19, uh, excuse me, 2020 and 2021, um, I finished out in the top 15% of my company um, at Wells Fargo. There's 230 people across the country that do my job. And I finished out 19 out of 230 people. So wow. um, that was just based off of, you know, the overall, it was based off of a couple of different things uh, over uh, based off the production of my team, our customer loyalty uh, and, you know, amount of repeat customers and so forth. So it's kind of based on a lot of different factors. Uh, but it was definitely on my performance of myself and my team. So it was pretty exciting. I mean, in a large company, sometimes yeah. you can feel like this little small fish in a, in a big ocean. So it was really nice to finish out. And, and in 2020, I was the only female in the top 20. So felt wow. cool about that as well. 
That's amazing. That's great. I love I love when women are empowered and they succeed in especially a male dominated industry, which I think banking would probably be. I don't know, Stephanie. Am I wrong? Uh, no, typically it is. It is a definitely a male dominated industry. And there's a lot of great. I mean, Wells Fargo has a great uh, lead. Our head of consumer lending uh, is a woman, Christy Furco, and she's great. She's uh, been in the mortgage and banking industry for years. So but yes, pri primarily when you get into that higher level leadership, it tends to be male dominated. So it's great to uh, crack the grass ce glass ceiling, I guess, if you will. Yes, yes. Now, I know 2021 was a stellar year for buying a home. People would put their house on the market and not even before the end of the day, it was sold and people would come in uh, with multiple offers way above the asking price. Right. So, Stephanie, do you think the driver, what was what was the driver for this amazing 2021 and everyone made who was in real estate made a lot of money? I mean, I know people that made a lot of money and they didn't have to do a whole lot because the offers were just coming in. <laughs> right. What well, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of it's just the demand. I mean, people, rent prices continue to increase. I mean, you know, you hear so much about inflation and, and, and it's really, truly, Michelle, the, you know, the American dream to be a homeowner. I mean, I remember when I bought my first home was a really exciting time for me. But, you know, mortgage rates had dropped due to the pandemic. We had seen we've always we've been in a really low rate environment for a long time, but we had record low record low mortgage rates. I mean, rates that we never even thought were possible. Again, I've been in this business for 20 years and back in uh, the early two, mid 2000s, when rates came down to, you know, five, even 4%, it was unheard of. Uh, it, rates in, in the history of tracking interest rates have never been that low. And so when we started dropping down to 3%, 2%, it really created opportunity for home affordability. Sure. Was the biggest thing. And so people that maybe in the past couldn't afford to buy a home now with a lower interest rate allowed them to have a little bit larger payment. And then also because of the pandemic, people weren't um, going out to eat or shopping and spending money. So they had a lot more disposable income, I guess, if you will. They're able to pay off some debts, which helped them in qualifying and also put more money in the bank and it helped them to allow more savings. So just put them in an overall better financial position to buy a home because now they've um, been able to pay off some of that debt and they're not spending as much. Um, they were still working and then they had money in the bank. So it just put them in a really good financial position to buy a home. That makes total sense. And the other thing that I read is the pandemic also had an impact on people moving out of the city into suburbia into, because they were home officing. They were working from home and a lot of people felt that they needed more space. Right. You, did you see that trend at Wells Fargo also? Yeah, absolutely. You know, people, well, again, they could qualify for a little bit more and people were willing to move outside the city because again, like you said, they weren't commuting. However, uh -huh. they did need a little bit bigger houses. They realized, and especially if kids were going to get homeschooled, then they realized, well, uh, you know, we thought we'd be okay with that two bedroom, one bathroom house, but um, we need, if, if we've got the bedroom for us and then our kids, Where's our office going to be? You know, the kitchen table isn't going to work or out in the garage isn't going to, you know, work. Right. So, uh, so, yeah. So opting for, you know, getting a little bit more of a bang for your buck, I guess, if you will, if you're moving outside the city, uh, opportunity homes tend to be a little bit more affordable. And then again, wanting those bigger houses. So, you know, even myself as a single person, you know, I've got three bedrooms, two bathrooms. That way I can have for my office if I have a guest. Uh, and so forth. So it just makes it um, kind of the way people think. For a while there, it was the tiny homes. If you remember, probably a couple of years ago, it was like the minimalist, the tiny home. That was kind of the trend we were seeing. And mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, we're going back to the McMansion phases. Um, and even multi-generational housing as um, senior living gets, you know, uh, our baby boomers are aging and the cost of health care is astronomical and uh, assisted living places. A lot of people are choosing multi-generational housing where mom and dad live in one section of the house and the kids live in the other section of the house. Um, and again, making it more affordable uh, for people to live. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what, tell us some things that if you're a first time home buyer, what do you need to know? And, and how, uh, you know, what are some of the easy steps that you should follow if, if I'm looking for a house for the first time? Yeah. And are there some, 
Yeah, and are there, there's still the breaks. I mean, I, I was 29 when I bought my first house. And um, I know there was that first time home buyers program. Is there still that out there? Absolutely. There's so many great products and programs out there for first time home buyers. And even if you're not a first time home buyer, if you're moving up to buy that second home, there's still a lot of opportunities out there. The most important thing that I stress, Michelle, to everybody is just talk to a mortgage consultant. I manage a team of great mortgage consultants that are happy to help you. Um, it's just really important. We typically need two years of employment history. Um, if you know, it's good to have some money in the bank. There's down payment assistance programs to help you out with that. Uh, we look at your credit. Uh, so it really is kind of your overall financial picture. But I think what's so important is if you think you're ready, like you might say, well, right now it's September. My lease isn't up until November. Really now is a good time to start looking because it may take a couple of months. We look at your situation. There may be some things that we need to clean up. Maybe there's credit cleanup or you've had gaps in employment, uh, whether you've taken time off of work or you didn't work due to COVID uh, or savings. You know, you might say, I do want that bigger house, but well, you don't quite qualify for it or we're going to need a little bit more of a down payment. So it's so important just to start out with a consultation. It doesn't cost you anything. You're not obligated to anything, but that just gives us a great time to look at your overall picture and see here's where you're at. So when you're out looking at houses, you have a good understanding of what you can afford. And sometimes we go out and we see, oh my gosh, I'd love that home. And can I afford it or not? So it's really important um, to understand what you can afford, what payment you're comfortable with. And, and we take a look at all of those things. I mean, and long gone are those days where, you know, people say, you know, houses are, you know, you're going to qualify for more than what you can afford. And all the banks, everybody, we learned our lesson. Uh, there are a little bit tighter lending standards because we don't want to go back to that. We want to make sure that your home is affordable. And sometimes people will say, well, I'm paying $2,000 a month in rent, so I can afford a $2,000 house payment. Well, it doesn't always equate to that because we don't want you living paycheck to paycheck. We're going to make sure that when you have your house, when we qualify you, and this goes for any lender, when we qualify you, we want to make sure that you have enough money left over to pay for your gas and your electricity and your cable and your gym memberships and all that other stuff. We, we know, you know that you can't spend 100% of your income on your mortgage payment because we don't want you to be one paycheck away from defaulting on your mortgage and then losing your home. That's the last right. thing. People might think that the banks, we don't want your house back. We're in the business of making home affordable um, and making it a possibility for you. So right. that's right. probably the best advice I can give is just talk to a mortgage professional. And again, I'd be happy to set you up with somebody on my team and just do that consultation. So you have a clear understanding of where you're at and what's expected. Great. Good tips. So Stephanie, let's move into a little bit about what your kind of um, passion is, which is speaking. And what does it mean to be a, a brand ambassador of affirmations? And tell us a little bit about that book you're reading or read. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been a, a sales leader for gosh, probably 30 years now. I've been um, in various roles in management. And so I always have looked at how can I help? I mean, one, I'm just really passionate about helping other people and serving other people and in a lot of different capacities. I mean, that's why I volunteer and so forth. But um, a couple of years ago, uh, as a sales leader, I was um, thinking, you know, how can ways that I can motivate my team? I mean, they're in sales or mortgage sales, and it's a very competitive industry. We're commission only. And sometimes, you know, you can get beat up in this market. I'm sure like with any industry, right, there's competition. You know that, Michelle, too, as a business owner. Right? How do you set yourself apart from your competition and what makes you unique? So I um, always looking for, you know, what's um, listening to podcasts, reading books, motivational stuff. So I found this book. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. I can um, see it. Yes. Yep. Okay. The Seven Levels of Communication by um, Michael Mayer. And it's an excellent book. It's a really fun read. Um, and it's it, there's kind of a little bit of a love story, if you will, uh, in it as well. But I read this book and I just thought, gosh, it was so good. And it really resonated with me. And so I just want to research a little bit more about the author. And, you know, was this a true story or did he make this up? Or is this the story of his life or what? So I went online and I searched Michael Mayer and I found out that he offers a training program. You can be coached by him and take his, and I thought, oh my gosh, this guy's a best-selling author. 
I, I want to learn with them. I, you know, we talk about, I want to be, I want to surround myself with like-minded people. And right. so I flew to Atlanta and I went to a week seminar, um, a week long seminar and just got trained by Michael about what it means to, you know, work a business. He talks about um, building a business based off of love, generosity, and appreciation. Um, and then also working by referral primarily. And so in the book, he talks, you know, there's a couple different uh, ways he talks about on how to build your business by referral and love, generosity, and appreciation. And one of them is through affirmations. And when I was in this training session and talking to Michael and he said, okay, you're all going to have to get up and do a presentation and you can choose the topic. And, you know, I really kind of, I, I just didn't know, like I had all these things in my head and um, I just kind of reflected back on a story that uh, something that had happened to me when I was younger and it was around affirmations and with my dad. And it, um, so it boiled down to basically is I created a mindset system um, around affirmations and Michael was so taken by my story and the affirmations that he said, I'm going to make you my ambassador of affirmations and invited me to speak on stage that week. I mean, I had just went to this training. I had no formal education as far as public speaking. I mean, I'm quite the extrovert. I'm passionate about right, coaching right. and training. So he invited me on stage uh, to tell my story and speak on affirmations. And so... Uh, so I've been doing that now for about three, four years. Um, every and now Stephanie, and then. can you give us an example of some affirmations for the people that are watching? Like just maybe five of them. Well, yes. So or that, or no, three, well, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let me just tell you a quick, if we've got time for a quick story, kind of how I work with my affirmations, right? So, uh, you know, there's and a lot of people struggle with it. That's why it's so passionate for me, because a lot of people, you know, struggle to go deep on their affirmations. They might say, well, you know, I guess I feel good. I like my hair. And, you know, I like my I'm thankful for my family and and my job. And, and, and all of that is great. But what I really encourage people to do is really go deeper on a deeper level about what we um, are grateful for and what we want to affirm about ourselves. So I created a mindset system using the letters of your name. So oh. my name is Stephanie. I spell it. If you can see it on the screen, S-T-E-F-A-N-I. So my affirmation statement is I'm Stephanie. I'm a strong, talented, energetic, fierce, amazing, never quits, inspiring lady. So Love it. that is my mantra. And so what I do is I encourage people to choose words and phrases of affirmation using the letters of their name. So, and I have a, um, I can get you the link to, it's a Facebook page. It's called what's in a name affirmations. And I've had hundreds of people post their name and their word affirmations and people have done it with their kids. It's been a great exercise for people to do with their children, but I really encourage people like to embrace your name because we all have a name and these words and phrases are words that you choose, right? It's and right. choosing these words, it really helps you kind of transform your thinking, overcome limiting self-beliefs, and just really believing like that's who you are. That's who Stephanie is. I'm sure there's other Stephanies out there and they spell their name the same way, but they're not going to have those same words and phrases of affirmation that I chose because those are specific to me. And Correct. Right? And I say, if you want to be better, if you want a better, you know, people say, I just, I want a better life. You know, I want to be that high level 10 person. You have to start believing that you're a level Absolutely. 10 person, right? Absolutely. The mindset, you know, the mind self and self-care, I think September self-care month from okay. what I know. And that's so important. And so um, did you make this up, this name affirmation thing, or is that something you learned in the book or from Michael? Well, I did make it up, but the story um, where it actually originated from was, so I take people back to uh, 1987 on November 11th, um, or excuse me, November 8th um, in 1987 uh, was a day that forever changed me. Um, I was a junior in college and I was up at the University of Minnesota Duluth and I was studying for my finals. And screwing around and getting ready. And then you have to remember now, this is 30 some years ago, right? So there was no cell phones and pagers and all this kind of stuff. And um, I just quickly stopped home to get some stuff. And I was going back to the library to meet my friends and we we're going to work on our final paper and all that stuff. And as I'm running around my house, I go, I hear this knock at the door and there's a police officer. And I was like, ah, 
I know I'm parked on the wrong side of the street. I'm in a no-toe zone. And so the police officer, he's like, yeah, I'm looking for Stephanie Havel. I'm like, it's me. I know. Yes, yes. And uh, he said, um, your father's been trying to call you and your landline has been busy and he needs to get a hold of you. And I was like, oh, Okay, this is so my dad, right? You know, checking in on me, making sure that I'm getting ready for my finals. And so anyway, so I asked my roommate to get off the phone and I call my dad and answers the phone. I'm like, hey, pops, what's up? Yes, I'm studying. Don't worry. Everything's fine. And he was silent on the other end of the phone. And his voice was audibly shaken. And he said, Stephanie, mama died today. Your mom died today. And I, okay, what are you talking about? Like, I just talked to her two days ago. I was just home last weekend and saw her. Like, this is not stuff that happens to me, not to my right. family. You know, we grew up in a great family. My parents are happily married. We had the little house. We went to private school. You know, everything was great in our life. Stuff like this doesn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. And well, unfortunately, it did. Um, my mom had passed away at the age of 48. And wow. so that week, so I, you know, went home and, um, you know, went to ho went home to be with my family and the funeral proceedings. And, you know, if you've ever been through that, um, something like that, it's, you know, people are amazing, right? There's so many people surrounding you and lifting you up. And, you know, we're from Minnesota, bringing you a hot dish, right? <laughs> so there was hot dish, there was pasta, meatballs, there was love. and tater tot? Was there tater tots? <laughs> Oh, Peter. probably. But, you know, we're ta I'm Italian Sicilian, so there's a lot of pasta right. and bread. Yeah, yeah. And else yeah, yeah. I was just um, doing the Minnesota thing. The tater that? tot. Yeah, I was just in the tot, Minnesota. Right? Tot. Yes, but you are you probably had pasta because you're like me, Italian. Yeah. Well, but yeah, the hot dishes were coming fast and furious. But yeah. So what I tell people in getting to my affirmation story is what had happened eight days later. So my mom had passed away on a Sunday, and so was that following you know, a flurry of, of, of activity and people surrounding you and lifting you up and loving on you. And, but unfortunately, you know, life goes on, right? So the following Monday morning, um, you know, it's at home. Whoops, we lost Stephanie. Well, she'll come back. I know Stephanie. Um, she might have accidentally hit something on StreamYard. So this is StreamYard. This is the platform we use for the Level Foodie LinkedIn show. She will be back, I know. So anyway, I hope everyone's having a good week. It is absolutely beautiful here today in Minnesota. I have to just shout out to our weather here because we're known for really cold weather and really hot summers. Today is the picture perfect fall day. It's about 72, bright skies, sunny, and it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. And then I think it's going to rain the rest of the week. So I know this, the, the people in California that are watching and all the fires and the rain that other people have had of really bad weather across the country. So I'm grateful. I'm thankful that today in Minnesota we're having a beautiful day. So anyway, um, next week I want to talk a little bit about my guest. Oh, here comes Stephanie. I'm going to add her back in. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Hey, Stephanie. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened there. You know, it, last week somebody was on and uh, they they lost, they jumped off too for a minute. So anyways, I was just going to talk about my guest next week, but I was, go on. So, okay. um, so you're, you're, finish so, your story. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so anyway, so next, so my um, Monday morning and there's my dad, I'm back home and, I'm, you know, my dad's screwing around uh, the kitchen and he's, you know, packing up his lunch and getting things like he's going back to work. And I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm going back to work and I want to know when you're going back to school. I said, what do you mean you're going back to work, going back to school? Mom just died eight days ago. Like I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. And he said, Stephanie, you know, my heart is broken and I'm grief stricken. But what you have to understand is the sun rises and the sun sets every single day. Every day you have to decide what you're going to do. You have to get up and go on because unfortunately life goes on, right? And it's going to go on without our mother in our lives. And I said, but I don't know how to do that, dad. I mean, I'm just, my heart is broken. And if this is a time when I need my mom, right? I mean, this is, I'm sad. I, I need my mom. I need her support. And he said, Stephanie, I understand that. He said, my heart is broken, but you have to decide. And he said, you can do this. Do you know who you are? Do you know who Stephanie is? 
I mean, who am I? Yeah, I'm a 19-year-old college student whose mom just died. That's who I am. That's my story. That's just how I'm going to be. And he said, Stephanie, you're my daughter. And Stephanie is a strong, talented, energetic, fierce, amazing, never quits, inspiring young lady. So Really? He said that? Yeah. yeah. So he said, when you wake up in the morning, yeah. And he said, that's who you are. That's who Stephanie is. Girl, you are a strong girl and you didn't get here. You're going to get a job. You're going to go back to school because you're talented. And I know you have the energy. Girl, you're fierce. <laughs> I think you're amazing. You've never quit. Never since a child. You've never quit. And you're inspiring. You're inspiring to me and to other people. And that's how you're going to get through things. And, and it was just right there. It was like in that moment, that's when I knew like, okay, I can do this, right? I, if I want a better life, I have to be better. And I have to start believing these, th these thoughts and these affirmations about myself. And, and so it really just kind of, you know, and I've kind of, and I kind of forgot about it going through, you know, life challenges. And, you know, I, I I've used it several times throughout my life. And my dad has just been an amazing uh, person for me. He's always been there for me. I tell people, you know, I've done this presentation and a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, um, so, you know, did you get on with life? What happened? Did you go back to school or where have you been or what's going on? And I said, you know, yes, of course. And actually, you know, my dad did get remarried um, and I went back to school and, you know, kind of got our life back on track. But then nine years later, um, so my dad was getting ready to sell our childhood home and I was actually getting ready to be married. And I was super excited. It was a great time in my life. And, um, and I was going to be getting married and moving to Las Vegas with my fiance. And so I had quit my job. I was just working a temporary, actually got a temporary job in mortgage um, at a temp agency. I had no mortgage experience, but I thought, well, I'll just do this job for a couple months and then I'm going to be moving to Las Vegas. So um, anyway, so fast forwarding, um, my fiance was living overseas playing professional hockey in Germany and he came home and once again, there was this knock at my door and it was my fiance and he had come home early. I wasn't expecting him to be home for about another three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, great. He's home to, you know, help plan the wedding. And here we go. And he said, Stephanie, I have to tell you something. I'm like, okay, what, what? You want to change your size tux? What do you need? <laughs> you want different flowers for the wedding? Um, and he said, I love you, but um, I'm not ready to get married. And I'm moving to Las Vegas without you. I actually have a flight out tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm just, I'm not ready to be married. This is not what I want. Um, it's not where I see my life going. And um, it's over. I was like. That was a defining, another defining moment in your life. 100%. I was like, okay. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, again, so I was living at home and there was my dad again and I'm crying at the kitchen table, can't pick myself up. And my nine-year relationship just ended, right? I thought, had a whole wedding planned. I mean, I was getting married in two months. Mm -hmm. And so once again, there was my dad and he said, you know, Stephanie, this man doesn't define you. This situation doesn't define you, you know, because he, you know, again, Stephanie, do you know who you are? And of course I was like, not right now, dad. Not right now. Don't yeah. need it. He said, no, no. Who is Stephanie? You know? And I'm like, well, I'm a 28 year old woman who just got dumped. I got no job. I'm going to have no place to live because you're selling the house. Now I have no boyfriend. Again, I let these situations define me who I was. That's what I was going to tell people was that, you know, I'm a single woman. I'm not getting married. And, and I thought, no, like my dad said, you know, you want to know what's your story? Who, what defines you? You define who you are. You are a strong, talented, energetic, fierce, amazing, never quits, inspiring young woman. That's who you need to be. That's who you need to tell yourself going to be. And then you can tell others. So that's where I just really encourage people to, I, you know, do this affirmation system. So I've just, you know, I reflected back on it. And that's what Michael, when I told the story and, and I kind of forgot about it, to be honest, um, as you know, life evolves and different things going on. And when I read this book and talking about, they call it like a miracle morning, like really encouraging you to do affirmations every single morning. And I, and I go back to what I had said earlier is I think so many people struggle. We don't feel good about ourselves and our mental health is, you know, we're struggling. And 
And, you know, okay, you know, there's the movie, you know, what was it that, you know, I'm strong, I'm kind, I'm important, I'm beautiful. But sometimes we don't believe it. You know, we're just saying those words, like you had asked me for words of, you know, so, you know, it's like, who is Michelle, you know, and you know, I think, you know, what I like about is I think what you're saying are all really good points. And I think um, we're not parents, neither one of us have children. But I think if you have children, what a great way to start a child's self-esteem and empower the children. Because today, so many kids are suffering, especially teenagers. The pandemic has affected so many children, not just academically, but um, depression is such a key. It's such a prevalent illness today in our society. So I think having positive affirmations and teaching children early on to believe in themselves, and to, to be strong and to be powerful, and to like themselves, is very moving and empowering. Thank you. And yeah, it's, if you, if you've because not everybody, like, but Stephanie, not everybody had a dad like you. Not everybody was given that um, positivity. So I think teaching a course and speaking to people who maybe didn't have that support um, is a good thing because it's not everybody grew up with that. Right. And that's where I, you know, it is so great too. I, you, you bring that up about kids on my Facebook page. Um, again, I've, I've told this um, presentation, you know, thousands of times and some of the best stories are the people, the ones that they tell me about their kids. I had on my Facebook page, there's a little boy um, and he, um, Liam Tate Wilson, and he used actually every letter of his name uh, about who he was. And his mom told me that to this day, he still, every day he chooses a letter of his name. Um, you know, he's um, Liam. And I think he said lifelong learner was what he was, was his L. Um, right. And so every day he says, you know, today, Liam, I'm going to be a lifelong learner. And the next day his eye is um, inspiring. So, um, but yeah, it's great. And it's amazing the parents when they, when they ask their kids to describe themselves and have their kids choose the words. And it can be at any age. I've had so many parents tell me that they're blown away by the words that their kids chose. They're like, wow, I never thought my kid would describe themselves as, um, as funny um, or as um, marvelous or magnificent or exciting. You know, like some of the letters that parents, you know, obviously have that love for their children. And, you know, even the words that, you know, I would say, you know, for Michelle, you know, um, well, when we hang up, well, we're now in the show. I'm going to, I'm going to do this little game with my name because I've never heard of it, but I love it. I love the yeah. idea. And I like, I like the idea of, you know, if you're speaking in public to introduce yourself, that's a great intro. Who am I? I'm Michelle. I'm da 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 da. Besides, I'm a, I'm a CEO and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an owner. I'm a founder, blah, blah, blah. I'm also Michelle. Right. And what is well, that? And, mean? and what's great for you is you have so many great letters in your name. Your C can be CEO, you know, or charming, charismatic, um, right. loving, love a foodie, right? I mean, right. Michelle is magnificent, uh, inspiring, charming, um, happy. I even, you know, I tell a story about one of my girlfriends. Her name is um, Deborah. And she was really struggling. She's extremely talented, extremely smart, principal scientist for a large um, medical corporation. And she was going in for an interview and she was really nervous. And she just, uh, just didn't think, you know, she was good enough for the job. And then she was also really struggling. She was in her mid forties, um, mm -hmm. mid to late forties, single. Um, and just really kind of felt like, you know, had this attitude that, well, you know, if I got this job, then I'm going to feel better about myself. And, you know, if I was dating somebody, if I was in a relationship, I'd, I'd probably be happier and I'd feel better. And so her and I did this exercise and she said it was life changing for her because she decided like her D, she was determined and her E was she's enough and her B was she's bold. And then her O, R, H was like our Deborah. It was accountable for her own happiness. And that's and it was really like she had to think about it. But I just loved it that she linked the letters of her name because there is no right or wrong way to do it because you right. can have phrases as well. Right. Um, but it was accountable for her own happiness was her A.H. Uh, at the end of her name. And she just said she's right. You know, it isn't a, it isn't a man. It isn't a job. It isn't children. It isn't money. It isn't this. It's her. And, right. and she's enough. You know, and when it she starts said with. Yeah, it starts with yourself and no job, no person, no child, no uh, spouse, no significant other. 
no house, no jewelry, no outfit is going to make you happy. It starts right. like and, and you realize, I mean, we can all, you know, we've all had, everybody's had circumstances in their life, you know, where we've been challenged. I mean, my, you know, people always say, are you always as happy? You know, I am because I'm grateful. Um, but, you know, yeah, I have my moments. I have certainly, you know, sometimes people may look at you and think, oh, you know, your life is so great. You've had it so easy. They don't know what's, you know, what's behind the curtain. But knowing it, just believing in myself and having these affirmations, really believing it that, and, you know, I tell people too, like, you can change up the words, you know, if you like, sometimes people say, well, you know, I think I want a different word or something for me. It's, it's okay. And I actually, and once you get this ingrained, um, because I've been doing it for so long, I use this when I work out, you know, I'm like at the gym and I'm like, okay, I'm strong. I'm tough. Enough. <laughs> I'm feeling fit. I'm awesome. Yeah. I'm not quitting. And sometimes my eye is, I got this. I'm like, okay, I got this. I got yep. this and yep. I can just go through those letters because I know the words and I can spell my name, but it's almost like my little mantra, right? Like That's I'm good. at the gym and I'm like, I'm not quitting. I'm strong and I'm tough. I'm enough. I'm fit. I'm awesome. I'm not quitting. I got this. And I just yes. explain it to myself. And then again, because you're spelling your name, it's me. It's, right. it's my name. It's and how you, know, yeah. it's how, it's how you choose your own, you know, description of yourself. So Stephanie, how can people get a hold of you? Say I want to, I'm a company or I'm a, in a, you know, youth group or I want I, a school or I'm whatever. And I want to hire you. Can I, are you available to speak? You're a motivational speaker besides your full-time job at Wells Fargo, besides liking um, this book and speaking on half of Michael. You also are independent and are available for hire, correct? Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the best way, I mean, you can find me on social media. Um, does my name appear on the screen or if, I guess yes. if you're listening, but um, it's yes. Stephanie, S-T-E-F-A-N-I. Um, my last name is Havel, H-A-V-E-L. And uh, so I'm, I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook. And then also um, my, just send me a text. My phone number is 612-940-7335. So, um, right. Yep. Text me or connect with me on social media. And yeah, I love doing my presentation, whether it's, um, I've been fortunate. Wells Fargo has been extremely supportive of me and doing this because again, you know, we have team members and we've struggled. So I've been really fortunate to be on several platforms at Wells Fargo, um, doing this on a large scale. And then also a lot of different teams and organizations within the company, um, have hired me and said, you know, can you do this with, um, our, my team, right? I'm a manager and my team. And, and again, it's been really fun because even as a manager, you know, I tell the story, I've got one guy on my team. I did this with all of my sales team and they had to choose their names and put it on their desk. So when I come to their office and we have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and I'm like, okay, who am I talking to today? Right. And one of my guys, Kevin, and he said, uh, Kevin, kick ass. And so now I'm like, well, are you kicking ass today, Kev? Because I'm not seeing it. <laughs> you know? But it's calling him up. Well, hey, you said that was who you were, not me. It right. Was the that you gave yourself. Um, yeah. My right. friend Amanda said her D, she's a damn good mom. You know? And I said, that's what I told her. Don't you ever let them forget that when moms feel like they're getting beat up, you know? Yeah. That's who you are. So, um, right. yeah. So it really can work in a lot of different venues as well. Absolutely. Well, Stephanie, we are running out of time. It's Monday and I know you have to go back to work. I have to go back to work. This is something that I do because I want to give back to the community. I want to give back to entrepreneurs. I want to give back to inspiring people like you, Stephanie. Um, you know, you're an encourager, you're uh, an empowering woman and an influencer and a great public speaker. So if anyone is interested in hiring Stephanie, you know how to get in touch with her. Also, if you have questions about mortgages, finance, banking, Wells Fargo, Stephanie can, she can either direct you to somebody on her team or she can find somebody at Wells Fargo who can answer your specific question. It might even be something like, is, you know, I want to buy a CD or I want to invest in something. I want a vacation Stephanie. property, right? Yeah. In all, right. We end in all 50 states. So it doesn't matter where you're listening from. I'm sure you've got people from all over the country. So uh, exactly. we can all 50 states. I can help you. Absolutely. Yep. So whether it's a finance question, banking question, um, a affirmation question, Stephanie's your person. Um, and, and Stephanie probably knows other things too. So, um, but anyways, Keep it to these subjects, I guess. 
Um, so thank you, Stephanie, for being my guest. Everybody, next week on Monday, I will have Sarah Hayden from Tipsy Pies. So join us. She's a, a local woman here in Minnesota with her delicious pies. And uh, everybody have a great week. And uh, as always, follow Love a Foodie on social media. And uh, happy Monday. Thank you, Stephanie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's great to chat with you. Thank you.